The matriarch of House Mokai, Ja'ula, has launched her rebellion at a time of political turmoil in the Klingon Empire, and this has led to a full-blown civil war. Chancellor Jumpok has made capturing Ja'ula a priority, following her attacks on Alliance territories. It appears the hunt for Ja'ula may come to an end soon. Our latest intel indicates she's operating out of four key sectors, including Kitama. I've dispatched operatives to three of those sectors, but I want you to check out Kitama personally. I'm sending General Martok with you. If she's there, I want the Alliance's best to take her down and bring an end to this civil war. Do your best to take her alive. But if she forces your hand, give her that traitor's death she deserves. To make matters more tenuous, this is all taking place within the first few months of the formation of the Kitama Alliance, a partnership between the Klingon Empire Federation, Romulan Republic, with ties to other powers like the Dominion, Deferi, and many more. You made it. Good. In times like this, every warrior needs someone they can trust at their side, and when fighting the Mokai, someone to watch their back as well. The former Chancellor, General Martok, has sided with the Chancellor as despite being enemies, he believes it is best for the Empire. He's here in his house's flagship, the Borel-class bird of prey, the Rotaran. Martok had been removed from the Chancellorship by Jumpok after the latter supposedly defeated him in a duel. That didn't happen and it has been one of the sticking points for this civil war, those that see Jumpok as unworthy. Joining us in the system is Captain Kargren, fellow veteran of the Iconian War and now in command of his new vessel, the AFS Kitama, the first of its class, and the first ship to be jointly designed by both Starfleet and the Klingon Defence Force. Elements of both cultures' primary designs can be seen in its shape. It has a Starfleet-style saucer section, and at the rear it has the arched wings, a hallmark of the Klingon D-series battlecruiser pylons. Cogran's here in that fancy new Alliance ship of his, flying Overwatch. Perhaps he's picked up some intel that could help us track down the Matriarch. Let's approach and ask him then. Give my regards to the Fairy Man. <laughs> if the Mokai want to fight, then a fight they shall have. The battle! A small attack wing of House Mokai ships sweep in to harass us, but they depart the system before sustaining heavy losses. I did however encounter a glitch in this mission where if you approach the Kitama too quickly before instigating the battle, the next phase of the storyline doesn't start, so don't do that. Welcome to Kitama. As you can see, the rebels are keeping us busy here. Skirmishers warping in to test our metal. They have not found us lacking. As for Jaula, we picked up some chatter recently. Nothing verified, but... But? Kagran, don't leave me in suspense like that. Intelligence thinks she's in space, under cloak, planning her next attack. But the chatter suggests she may be planet-side, working with people friendly to her cause. A bold move, if it's true. I suggest sending a team to the surface to investigate. Hawk Nook care! Consider every possibility. Or at least that's what I think that means. My Klingon is a still a little rusty. Hmm. We're picking up some erratic readings from the outer part of the sector. Could be more skirmishers trying to sneak in and sink their blades in our backs. We'll deal with it. You should keep looking for the Matriarch. Understood. Good hunting, Captain, and have fun with your new ship. Good hunting. And tread carefully. A nest of diplomats can be a dangerous place. You know what? I'm probably going to take a security team anyway. <laughs> when the Ferengi say the bigger the smile, the sharper the knife, I believe they had diplomats in mind. Well, that's an interesting point. Get it? Because the knife... I I'm know just, some okay, people down there. We might be able to get some intel out of them, provided they don't bore us to death with their witless banter. Well, you know what? That is a risk we will have to take. See you down there, General. Plus, I don't really mind the witless banter. 
ignoring the fact that Cargren just warped into a planet, which is probably not good for his health, and I think is also a crime, we make for a standard orbit of the planet Kitima. Kitima has long been the location for diplomacy involving the Klingons, although it did end up in Romulan hands at one point. It was returned to the Klingons in 2382. Having been the seat for numerous negotiations with the Romulan Republic back in 2409, and then with all the major powers in 2410 at the outset of the Iconian War, Kitima now plays host to the headquarters of the Kitima Alliance. For Ju'ula to be here is posing a great risk to her. Surely everyone down there would like to see her behind bars, or dead. Then again, it's not unlike a move she pulled recently, where she walks straight into the Klingon capital city on Kronos. Let's check in. Tedious, but necessary. The front desk officer might have some insight on the Ja'ula situation as well. They see every face that comes in here. Uh, officially, at least. I mean, I guess it's a good place to start. This building used to be a monument to Klingon glory. Much has changed. What? This transporter room? I joke, I joke, but honestly, I doubt Ja'ula simply beamed in and walked through the main entrance. Surely this Norsecan guard would have spotted her. We walk into the entry chamber to see a reception desk, and the iconography of the Empire has been replaced by the sigil of the Kitima Alliance, a combination of the Klingon dagger and the Starfleet Delta. We reach the reception desk unhindered, and speak to a very well-mannered Klingon. Welcome to the diplomatic chambers. Several delegates are present to discuss the Mokai Rebellion in the Chamber of Alliance nearby. Hi, proud to meet you, Mark Hale. Say, so you look like a canny sort. Have you, I don't know, seen Jirula walking around at all? Hmm. That is an interesting rumour, considering that several blood feuds have been declared against House Mocha. I would find that... unlikely. Not to mention messy. You are completely right. Uh, when did you say I could find the delegates again? You will find the Klingon delegation in the central area of the Chamber of Alliance. It is flanked on the left and right by the Romulan and Federation delegations, respectively. The delegation from the Dominion can be found across from the Klingons until their formal section is completed. Well, you've been a great help. Let's see what the delegates know. The Chamber of Alliance is a couple of rooms ahead of us. Well, would you look at that, Martok? Jula didn't simply beam in and walk into the main entrance hall without anybody seeing her. If she is here, she's here surreptitiously. Also, why did you say the Chamber of Alliance, like with a sneer? Martok's reaction is... understandable. Many Klingons do feel that they are giving up too much of their culture in favour of appeasing powers like Starfleet. Most human operas are timid, but I do enjoy the one with the clown. <clears throat> Anyway, although many still ultimately do want peace and cooperation, it still stings their warrior's spirits to see former monuments to Klingon power dressed so differently. We step from the corridor into the main hall, the now named Hall of Alliance, and we can see it's laid out as the receptionist said. The Klingons have their consulate in the middle, on the opposing right-hand side we have the Federation Embassy, and on the left we have the Romulan Republic. The Dominion are currently at the far end of the hall, and don't have an embassy as yet, but they do have a delegation. There are, of course, other diplomats dotted around, and I'll sort of point them out as we meet them. But among them is Ambassador Rugen Skill here. He's a Cardassian diplomat who hangs around with Councillor Garrick. Skill used to have a bigger role in the game, and doesn't so much anymore. We also have the Deferi Ambassador Sura here, who was the Ambassador to the Federation and now seems to have graduated to Ambassador to Kitima. We actually did some missions for him and alongside him in the Lost Chapters story arc. So this is the Chamber of Alliance. Ha! Huh. It wasn't long ago that it was called the Chamber of Conquest. I spent many a night in here, drinking blood wine and singing songs to honour the glorious dead, heroes all. <sighs> Those days are gone. Conquest has given way to alliance, to diplomacy. I mean, Maltok, that's not a bad thing. 
and you can still get like rad assed in here. Some of the others might even join in. Speaking of which, do you recognize any? Several. I know three of the four delegates here. Some more than others, but enough to get their ear and see what they know about Jaula's whereabouts. Interesting. Three of the four. So who's the one you're not familiar with? The one from the Dominion. They must have assigned a new Vorta. I don't recognize this one. You'd better do the talking. Vorta and I uh, do not always get along. Ah, of course. You lived through the Dominion War. Yes, that's bound to leave a sting. Well, who to start with first? I figure if anybody might know about some secret infiltration going on in the Embassy, it might be the Romulans. The Romulan wing is up these steps. So. On the Romulan Republic side of things, we have not only the Romulan Ambassador, but the Riemann one too, and they're all surveying a gigantic galaxy map underneath their own individual meeting table. Now, this mission unfolds differently depending on what faction you are allied to. The differences are minor at first, but greater later on. As a Starfleet character, I'll stand better luck talking to the Federation delegates, and they'll actually talk about the rumours circulating, not just the official stances, whereas everyone else will just give me the by-the-books answers. Greetings. I take it from the scowl on General Martok's face that this is not a social call. What brings you here today? Martok? Oh, don't worry about him. That's how he always looks. So, believe it or not, get this, I'm looking for someone? Uh, Jaula? Ah, yes. The name on so many lips these days. Fascinating woman. I suspect she'd make a good Romulan. After a visit to the tailor, of course. As for her whereabouts, I must disappoint you. I haven't the slightest idea where she is, and more's the pity. There's a considerable bounty on her head. Enough to buy a small moon, I'm told. I know. I mean, Federation citizen, I don't actually need the money, but it would be nice. Speaking of which, do you have any leads? Rumor has it she's actually here. As a child, I had good reason to think my grandfather was blown up by James Kirk in the neutral zone. Only later did I learn he died in an alley after an ill-advised life choice involving a senator's mistress. You can see why my parents chose to tell me he died a hero, hmm? Uh, sometimes we delude ourselves to avoid unpleasant truths. And such delusion can spread like wildfire in times of crisis. That is actually scarily true. So, after that deeply personal analogy, we say goodbye to the Romulan ambassador and set off to find someone else. Well, as we're making our way from left to right, let's stop in at the Klingon embassy in the middle. This is who Jampak chose to be our representative? Why, this guy? I don't recognise him. Martok, help. Okay, 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 game face. Um, <clears throat> Okay, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen you for ages. How are you, Ambassador? Name tag, name tag. G Goku. Goku, damn. Look there. Wait. Yes. I know your face. You're quite the hero, eh? Ah, my manners. You must forgive an old warrior. What do you need? No need for apologies. We're old friends. We go way back, right? Anyway, I was just wondering, have you seen Jula around here by chance? Jaula! Pa! That craven witch doesn't have the spine to show her face. Even in a place like this, she's not even a true Mokai. She married into the house to get her pathetic father out of debt. The only member of that line worth anything was Takuva. Glory to his name! Yes, yes, Takuva certainly did things, horrible things to Starfleet. But rumour has it, Jaula's actually here. Ah, uh, gossip! The ramblings of old fools with dull blades and nothing better to do than run their mouth. Honestly, if you believe every rumour you heard, Jaula would be leading an army of augments with Caliphs reborn at her side. How true you are, my old friend Gorkon. No. Go. Goodbye. Oh, that was awkward, that was awkward. Thanks for chipping in, Marzok. The Federation wing is up these steps. Fine, I'll take a hint. I'll go speak to the, probably the first person I should have spoken to. The Federation side is set up as a mirror to the Romulan wing. 
with its own holographic map and areas for relaxation, and both Klingon terminals and imported Elkars displays. However, over here we have a familiar face, Ambassador Jiro Sugihara. We'll chat to him after, but right now we're here to talk to the official delegate here, this Keichin Ambassador. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Your service to the Federation has helped us build the Alliance and keep it safe. We're in your debt. Please, how may I be of assistance today? Pleasure to meet you, Ambassador Nora. I'm here on official business, hunting for Ju'ula. Well, she's been a topic of spirited debate here for some time now. Her recent actions at Konos and Kuvat have placed the Empire into a state of civil war, after all. As to her whereabouts, Starfleet is doing all it can to find her and bring her to justice. But she is quite elusive, as one would expect from the leader of House Mokai. I am afraid I have no idea where she might be. <sighs> really, no one seems to. If it were anyone else, I'd say no comment. Starfleet Intelligence believes that Ja'ula is operating from this system. She has more allies than you think. Even in these chambers, we suspect several ranking officials in the Klingon delegation are sympathetic to her cause. Unofficially, of course. Right. That might explain a couple of things. If she has sympathizers here on site, then it's very possible that I owe Martok an apology and she might indeed have actually walked in, perhaps in disguise or with another delegation. This one looks particularly smug, even for a Vorta. Maybe you should let me do all the talking this time. With no embassy or area of their own, the Vorta ambassador sits flanked by his Jem'Hadar. On behalf of the Founders and of the Dominion they created, I welcome you. Tell me, how may I be of assistance? Ambassador Delva, is it? So, here's the funny thing. I'm actually looking for Jula, I know, right? I'm hoping to literally bump into her down here. What a fascinating question. Can you imagine how chaotic it would be in this hallowed hall if that were so? I honestly don't know who would kill her first, though I suppose the logical choice would be a member of the Klingon delegation. A member of the Klingon delegation, you say? Am I reading too much into that? Was that a hint? Are you trying to drop a subtle hint? I'm afraid I'm not one to give consideration to rumours and idle gossip. I am a Vorta, after all. We prefer to operate in the realm of fact and truth. I do wish you success in your endeavours, however. Ah, well. Thank you for your time, anyway. She is here. I'm sure of it. We just need to keep digging. I believe it's time to escalate things. Let's go straight to the top, to the chairman himself. He's a crafty old schemer. If anyone knows, it'll be him. <sighs> Wide smiles, all of them. Their knives must be sharp indeed. Before we check in with the spokesman, let's just chat with the Ambassador Sugihara. Hello. It's hard to believe this is real sometimes. Consider... Two years ago, the Klingons and the Federation were at war. The Romulan Republic was in its infancy, and the Dominion was a vast, silent enigma. Ah, indeed. It felt like it unfolded in real time. And now, we have a grand alliance spanning across all four quadrants, a symbol of galactic diplomacy at its finest. This place was once a symbol of conflict and conquest. Now, it is a beacon to all. A tribute to peace and friendship. That is true. This place has certainly changed, although... Nah, old memories die hard. Perhaps. I prefer to see Kittimer as a statement. Despite the great threats from forces like the Borg, the Iconians, and the Herc, when we stand together, we survive the storm. That is also true. But any thoughts on the current threat? Matriarch Ja'ula... Alliance efforts to bring her to justice and end her campaign of terror are in full effect, as you know. We've come too far together to see a misguided warrior from a darker time bring it all crashing down around us. We will prevail, my friend. Count on it. Oh, I hope so. It's a messy situation. 
With no one else to talk to, we heed Mardok's suggestion and make for the end of the hall, where we have the podiums and speeches that take place, to talk with the Alliance chairman. In the antechamber to the conference room, however, we spot the marbled floor with the Kitima Alliance logo on it and a large vat of blood wine. See, Martok, there is still blood wine and drinking that can go on here. We step through, resisting the big pool of booze, and step into the open air of Kitima beneath a hazy sky. Banners of the three founding powers are draped along the edges, while the well in between houses the many seats for the conferences. Each of the three Alliance members have a podium in the stands, while the floor houses one for the chairman or speaker on behalf of the Alliance itself. Presiding over all of this is one of the sons of the Kitima system under the open sky. We speak to the Ferrison chairman, Senator. Greetings, gentle beings. Until now, I have only known you by reputation. I am pleased to finally meet you both face to face. I've received word from Kronos regarding your mission here. How can I help? So, you may think we're on a wild goose chase, but we actually have intel that says Jewelers here. That would be unsettling if it were true. My security staff takes great care in their vetting procedures. If Matriarch Jaula has spies in our ranks, they'd know about it. I would know about it. Sadly, I think you're chasing your tail on this one. Hmm. If you say so... Hmm. What's this? What? What's what? Is there something in the air? I think you need to see this. It just came through on all channels. You got a pad with you? Let me see. What the? Well, we found her. There was a time when I believed my brother's cry of Remain Klingon was unnecessary. That no true Klingon would need such a reminder. But now I know the truth of it. Then and now. There are those who have forgotten what it means to be Klingon. The tyrant, Jempak, seeks prosperity for his house alone, and tosses scraps to those he deems loyal. He has forgotten what it means to be Klingon. It is a lesson I am happy to teach him. In battle! Join me, and you can do the same. Join me, and together we can show Jempak what it means to be warriors. What it means to have honor. What it means to be Klingon! Impressive speech. This is the break we needed. That signal didn't come from space. She's planet side. Somewhere. So much for the chairman's vetting procedures, eh? So the rumors were true. We should be able to trace it. We must act quickly. Start the trace in here. See what we can find. The first one is easy enough to find. Hmm. This is a localized signal relay unit. Clever. We're getting warmer, but we're not there yet. It looks like the signal's coming from within the Chamber of Alliance. Then that is our next stop. We retrace our steps to find the next signal relay, and basically engage in a game of hotter or colder with the tricorder to narrow down its location. We should check the Chamber of Alliance for the broadcast signal. The signal is getting stronger. If you manage to find all three signal relays on the first attempt, you actually get an achievement called You've Done This Before, insinuating the fact that you just remembered where they are from the first time you did it. Another relay unit. Typical Mokai deception. Let's see that. If I'm reading this right, the signal is coming from the Gallery of Honor. Those were the corridors we passed through on the way to this hall, right? Between us and the transporter room? Have you seen this baseball? It is peculiar. Ah, uh, excuse me. Hmm. Interesting. This relay unit is getting a signal from below us in the under chambers. There is an access stairway that goes down there nearby. It's behind one of the doors in the arrival courtyard. Below us? Very well then, that is our next stop. Huh. My wife stopped my two sons from dueling over a stuffed targ. Ah, they grow up so fast. I don't care. I have more important things to do. Here. This door should take us downstairs. We head through to the maintenance corridor behind these hallowed halls, and then down the stairs to the lower levels. 
I guess two of my squad thought they should probably hang back to guard the entrance to make sure we're not being followed or something. I'm going to pretend I ordered them to do that, but then a thought occurs to us. Martok, how do you know so much about the layout of this place? Ha! The last time I was down here, I'd had uh, too much to drink and thought I was on my way to the transporter room. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Should I be wary of leaning on any of these walls? Well, let's just say it's easy to get lost down here and leave it at that. I'll take your word for it, General. Know this. There are plenty of dark places down here where Jaula and her forces could be hiding. Keep your weapon ready. If there's one thing Mokai love, it's a good ambush. Oh, I know. We've fallen afoul of plenty of those. But it looks like we might have found some of our own to stage. They found us! Stop them! Ahead, we can see the unmistakable armour of House Mokai troops. Marka! Why are you here? We're here for the Matriarch. Where is she? You're making a huge mistake! This soldier is of House Klek, one of the first outspoken supporters of Ja'ula and ancestral ally to House Mokai. Marka! You of all people should know! That Jimpak is unworthy to rule. You carry the blade of Kalos. You led warriors against the Herc. Why do you follow such a dishonorable Bichnu? Kalos he is not, but Jempak has preserved the Empire through many a conflict. I may not like him, but I respect him. He has preserved the Empire by making us the lackeys of the Federation. When the Herc returned, he hid behind his throne. That is not the way of a true Klingon. You should fight at Jeweler's side instead of begging for scraps at Jimpak's table like a toothless old targ. Don't insult Martok. He's a badass Jeweler now. Do you take me for a victory? I will not betray the matriarch to the likes of you, Tuck! You know what? Fine. I bet there's plenty more of you down here for me to ask. General Martok, I suggest the Rotaran take hold of these prisoners. I don't think a Federation vessel should be taking them. Stubborn fool, but loyal. We're going to have to keep looking. Let's start with that door over there. Looks like the only unlocked one in here. That's a plan. And also convenient. But that is where we'll have to leave off for now. We're barely halfway through this mission and I had to replay it several times for reasons. Spoilers for the next part. Anyway, we are rapidly approaching the end of current content for Star Trek Online at the moment, but with these new emissions, the level of dialogue and quality has generally increased, leading to more cinematic experiences spread over lengthier missions. I prefer this, hands down, but it does mean I can't just surmise and skip things. Not that I generally want to. Next part, we'll see things escalate severely with the disaster on Kitama once more, and an upheaval of our position in the Alliance. Treachery is afoot. Until then, I've been Rick, and thanks for joining me for this Star Trek Online story series as we continue to explore the ever-growing narrative of Star Trek Online. Thanks again, and goodbye. <laughs>